The next big story or trend would be hybrid and multi-cloud has moved from buzzwords uh, to the default operating model uh, that the enterprises and even some of the hyperscalers are pushing. Just a couple of years ago, uh, multi-cloud or hybrid cloud, you know, at a cloud computing conference where a cloud brand was sponsoring the conference was verboten. Not, they, they didn't allow you to say it. Certainly, I put in my presentations and things like that. And, and uh, proposals to speak at some of these events. And if I got anywhere near the multi-cloud or hybrid cloud stuff, uh, they wanted me to leave it alone. And they viewed it as not in their best interest to move in this space. And that we saw just with the reInvent um, uh, Google announcement where they're supporting you know, multi-cloud interoperability between two hyperscalers, in this case, Google and AWS. Obviously, the opinions have changed, but the enterprises, have think of, I think, have always had the same understanding. In other words, if you're leveraging cloud computing, whether you know it or not, you're leveraging a multi-cloud deployment. Not anybody, very few organizations out there, I think, if any, I haven't seen one, that are using a single cloud provider without using some of the other cloud providers for some way, shape, or form. And the reason is fairly clear. If you're going to pick best of breed technology, you're going to have an assortment of different hyperscalers out there that have an assortment of different services, and you're going to pick the best. And if you're going to pick the best, it's going to be one more. It's more than one cloud brand that ends up being your solution. That's all that had occurred. So what was really important in 2025, not that multi-cloud and hybrid cloud was new and emerging. It definitely wasn't. It's been coming on for the last 10 years was the fact that I think the hyperscalers are finally recognizing the fact that that's the way their clouds are being leveraged for the enterprises.